um, <laughs> currently trending on Twitter. Um, right. All right. Um, it's now time to bring in, a, you know, definitely a dissenting voice in, um, in, in our next, in our piece, Dorbs. Who is it? Who's going to give us a little speak now? Well, in our weekly episode, our regular June Slater, Slatered, talked about gas boilers and the working class in a usual way, like a, like a battle axe through the skull. We've had 18 months of being locked down. We can't go to our favourite restaurant. We can't go to our favourite bar. We can't go and meet our friends. We can't go dancing. We can't go and buy food properly without queuing up in the cold with a mask on. We've had all that. We can't even book a holiday without endless paperwork, taking drugs and testing to get back into the country you formerly left. You're fit and healthy, remember? There's nothing wrong with you. That's why you booked a holiday. Not only have we had all that, Boris now tells us just in time for autumn that we can have some new boilers that we don't need. We're going to all have to go over to electric boilers. What a good idea, not. Every heating engineer that I've spoken to has told me how they're not even capable of getting your existing radiators up to the temperatures they currently do. Looks like we're going back to my dad's old army coat on the bed then for winter. It's not good for the poor, it seriously isn't, and we've had enough of this claptrap. Unfortunately, the more I see Boris hugging people like Joe Bedridden and congratulating Justin Trudeau for getting in again, what are you doing, Canada? Um, the more I worry. My backside's going sixpence, threatening bit, sixpence, threatening bit, because I just wonder what this government is coming up with next. Your boilers are a stinking idea. The national grid can't cope. Wait till cars fire up. They can't cope with them either. But that's for another video. Boris, stick your boilers where the sun don't shine. It's not good news. It's crucifying the poor. Joe Bedridden. I mean, that's a good one. That's a keeper. It's an absolute yeah. keeper, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Um, Alice couldn't roaming report this week, which we were very upset about. So we had to send out someone useless. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that? Um, I don't know. Me. Yes. Yeah, it was me. So, yeah, it was a very emotional week this week. And as far as June Mummery, who we, of course, travelled to go Lower and stuff. meet. Um, Lois off the Queen of the Fisheries, former colleague of mine as an MEP, and uh, keep them peeled soon for an announcement about June Mummery and the Reclaim Party. Um, she's very, very taken by a certain somebody rolling a cigarette as we speak. Lawrence, you know who that is? Dorbs. Yeah, I don't. You. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> she's more. T she's taken by you. I'm taken by Paul Lines. Yeah, I think he's he's got better hands. He's just hot. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we, it was very emotional. We went up to um, Lois Stoff because our vibe, yeah. because obviously you get censored by Twitter and you open a newspaper and it says Lawrence Fox is a Nazi racist paedophile and sort of <laughs> that in that order or That's other orders. So, so we, what we do is we just pop in the car yeah. and we drive over to places and we meet people and we talk, talk to them. And we find out and we sat through a CFAS, which is uh, about the fishing stocks meeting with Paul and mm. June mm. and... Uh, you know, and their their appeal, and it was ju uh, I, I could understand it in minutes what mm. they were talking about, and they just they were just met with like, mm -hmm, yeah. yeah, and they, these people are actually you know when we talk about the environment, it's mm. genuine environmentalists, yeah, you know, yeah. really yeah. care about the environment, so it was very very moving to be there, and these communities have been totally ignored, and and let down. So Dorbs went out to watch the. They drove their fishing boats down and, yeah. they, and they did a few circuits of Parliament. Good on you. We're about right behind you. I am here today with June Mummery, former MEP colleague of mine, the fisherman's friend. In fact, I think in a former life she's probably a mermaid. Paul Lyons from the Lower Soft Fisherman's Alliance, you're also with them too. We're in Westminster today. Fellas, what's the event? Well, we're here specifically to lend support to our South Coast colleagues. On the East Coast, we had the might of the Dutch fishing fleet fishing with electricity. It wiped our fishery out and it's slowly recovering. But in the channel, the Dutch are now turned them vessels over to fly shooting, which is a method of using a lot of rope and a lot of power. It's wiping that fishery out. The government over there are after building a sustainable fishery for British fishermen. 
with unfettered access by the Dutch fishing fleet and the French fishing fleet, it isn't going to happen. They're liars. They lied to us. We were meant to be taking back control to build a sustainable fishery for future generations. There won't be any fish left if they don't wake up and do something. They've got the power to stop this. They either got to cap the horsepower, cap the size of these boots, or ban the method in its entirety. But the, the trouble with banning this method in its entirety is it'll affect a lot of other people, not the culprits who are doing the damage. June. So there are other fishermen here today from New Avon as well and we've got a flotilla of boats arriving shortly. What's the mood amongst British fishermen about the Brexit deal and this lot over there? Well the mood is well, they're absolutely deflated. Um, there are fishermen coming today, a lot haven't come because obviously they are deflated and they've just had enough and what is the point? You know I never ever dreamt that I would be back standing here outside the House of Lies again. We did not take back full control of our waters and the resource, we were lied to. So here we go again, we're back where we were at the start. Well guys, the boats are about to come down the river. Yeah, um, can we expect someone like Bob Geldof to turn up again? If he I'd does, love so, I yeah. hope so. <laughs> well, I've got a slogan to cover this, that's, that's our fish, that's our seas and our future. And that's what we're here today, to make this work. To try and wake the house of the sleepers up to realise that there's people out there that rely on that ocean and they should be representing their true interests, not just trading it away because it's insignificant. I hate being called insignificant, Martin. You know, I mean, in actual fact, in the last war, fishermen played a vital part in keeping the sea lanes clear of mines. Yeah. Then people that are laid to rest in that cemetery, they weren't insignificant. They were very, very, very popular people and they'd done a really good job. They forget that. to be my boot that did and to see that repurposed in Greenpeace are now using that to protect the environment and help make the case what fishermen are trying to make is absolutely wonderful to me. Very emotional. I'm Neil Whitney, uh, owner of a 12 metre trawl of our New Haven and I'm up here today to support everybody else. We're trying to get these fly shooters and these big factory ships banned from the channel because they're just wiping everything out and pushing us all out of business. It's getting really hard to make a living now. And if they don't do something, this lot don't pull their finger out of their arse, we won't be here in a couple of years' time. The fishing industry, yeah, is dying very quickly. It needs to be sorted out. It's not sorted out pretty quick, and there's going to be no local fishing communities, and everyone's going to be put out of business. It needs to be stopped, and it needs to be stopped now. Well, there you go. Um, I'm going to throw this one to Dorbs because it's a particular area of passion for him and I'm a beginner and I'm learning about this stuff. Yeah, it was, it was a real choker in a way, you know, to see June Mummery and Paul Lizer. These are like, they were like kind of the very, very beginnings of, of the Brexit movement. And, you know, the fishermen were really treated as, as a terrible, terrible piece of collateral damage in this because taking back control of our waters was a primary key message. Um, Brexit was a brilliant idea that was delivered terribly by Boris Johnson and the, the, the fishing communities were badly, badly let down. Um, it was a really interesting protest of the day because we, we saw unlikely bedfellows in people like Paul Lines, fishermen from, from New, Haven, New Haven, from Lowestoft, and they're all with these undergraduates from Greenpeace who are suddenly waking up to the fact that if you have enormous super trawlers from Holland and France just scouring the bottom of the oceans and ripping all of our fish out of the water and, and eviscerating those ecosystems, mm -hmm. that is environmental damage. Yeah, the EU has been an ecological disaster yeah, in terms that, of fishing. And as Paul said, I said to him, why don't they care about this? And he said, because they can't see it. Mm -hmm. If they could see burned fields, they could mm -hmm. see dead animals. Yeah, be, they can't see yeah, the bottom yeah, of the ocean. Forest being burnt down, because that's yeah. what it is. Like, in these uh, waters, even, even the cold waters around the UK, uh, you get um, deep sea corals, yeah, and uh, so they're an incredible, um, you know, place where where fish create a habitat for fish and undersea life. 
And when they all get like knocked down, I mean, number one, it's, it's decades before they regrow, mm. if not hundreds of years. Mm. And, uh, and it just completely destroys all that mm. environment. It's the same as clear failing rainforest. Yeah. Yeah. What were you saying, Alice, about the EU being a disaster for the environment? Well, yeah, it's been this way for decades um, with their super trawlers just destroying um, the ecosystems. And, and we've, we know now that there's around 2,000 EU vessels still plundering our waters daily. Mm. And of course, fishing was a cornerstone of the Brexit vote mm. and was so important to so many of these fishing communities, mm. which have been decimated by all the regulations and the directives from the EU. Yeah. So um, it was very important to these people. I had the privilege as well of talking to many fishermen whilst on the Brexit um, campaign trail. And, and yeah, to, to, to know that they've been betrayed in such a way, treated as though their votes just didn't matter, as their communities didn't matter. I mean, these people have families mm. to feed and, yeah. and, we're, and we were promised that we would regain control of our waters. How many times did Boris Johnson yeah. say, yes, yeah. of course, fishing, fishing, Well, he's, fishing. Not, he's, not, renowned he's, for, uh, yeah. he's not renowned for telling the truth, but Boris. In fairness, <laughs> in fairness, Europeans yeah. eat fish a lot more than us. We just eat the fingers. So the rest, <laughs> That's not true. The rest I love of the fish, fish gets thrown back. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, but the, but the point is, you know, there'd be, there'd be a huge potential for exporting. You know, yeah. there's I mean, so really, many... We're buying back our fish from Norway. Fish that, yeah. was, that was fish in our own waters. No. This is this is also about our territorial waters, mm. about our, our sovereignty, and and how nothing has changed. In fact, things are getting worse with mm. the new treaty deal signed yeah. by Boris Johnson. That is such a sort of bureaucratic, yeah. systemic nightmare. The fact that Norway's mm. c coming over, catching our fish, yeah. and taking them back, back, and then we have to buy them. So they have to joke. be shipped back yeah. over. Well, we're getting our coal delivered from Australia yeah. because yeah. Yeah. We're, yeah. it's so it's woke that we're like, oh no, we must. <laughs> It, no, it's not only is it dirty coal, it's mm. crap coal, yeah, it's brown yeah. coal. Yeah, yeah, and, and, oh, I can't deal with that, how and, and, and yeah. virtuous we have to yeah. be at the expense of the environment. Yeah. It's all dirty, you know, yeah. Chinese power stations yeah. building, and just next to them, they're building all the solar panels that we can yeah. put on our roofs. <laughs> so we go, oh, we feel wonderful <laughs> about it. Look at how wonderfully environmental yeah. we are. We're it's so just... sorry, we'll reduce our emissions to zero, and then we'll decolonize <laughs> them as well, and then we'll decolonize the fish who are also racist. <laughs> and it's just like, I can't cope. Okay, so my hope from this is that we reclaim our fishing communities. Yeah, and that's a real, that's a real attainable goal. Mm. And, and I think we've been invited down there to, to go fishing with these boys, these girls. They, they want us on the boats, and I don't mean you want to do that. Yeah. Um, I think you'd look great in a life jacket, Alice. <laughs> Leo, we could, we could always use you. That's just everyday sexism. Yeah. <laughs> no, we could always use you as a surfboard. No, yeah. if, if all else went wrong. Well, he looks quite. He could be. He looks quite like a basking shark or a yeah. seal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they want us to go down there and. We'll um, go. We can, we want to go everywhere and talk to and talk to people. It's yeah. fun. It's fun going deep sea fishing as well because like mm. they pull up all kinds of just mad random fish. Yeah. It's like going to the zoo, <laughs> and there's just yeah, you see all this crazy stuff. But I, I think in terms of the hope and in terms of what I hope for the reclaim party, um, I th I think. We need to go Viking style without the pillaging and the rest of it. <laughs> but, but, the, say, the, what, the one fun see, part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so you, want, you want us to get in some long boats, travel over the in the other direction, Let's do it. and rape and pillage. No, <laughs> what's that going to help the what, fishing what, communities? What, what I mean, I mean, um, the first Daubney was was a Norman invader. I, I'm really? yes, I'm an immigrant, yeah. so throw me out of the room. <laughs> what I mean is, let's take this country over from the coasts again. Yeah. Let's, let's yeah, go from we're the coast an and move also in. From the, from, the, from the people that politicians are meant to look after. And they've shafted instead them. Of the, instead of sort of sitting around in wine bars drinking yeah. sort of vaguely pink Prosecco mm, yeah. going, oh, <laughs> darling. Yeah. Uh, the environment is an absolute, it's all over. I can't, this is all I can think about. And these Tarquins <laughs> on the roof of a train at Shadwell as we speak. <laughs> yeah, well, precise. And these stories all fold into each other. So these are the areas that are having all the wind farms dumped on them off coast. Yeah. These are the areas. And Paul they changed the migratory pattern of the fish, they Paul do. was saying. He said, they, he said where there were fish before, there are no fish now. Yeah. And it's like, where are the, well, why are you not speaking to these people who generation after generation yeah. after generation have sustained fish stocks? Yeah. You, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to be, it's like, it's, I mean, it's like the Fox hunting yeah. thing. It was decided out uh, in London. It was like let's throw a throw a little you know 
morsel to the left in London. Yeah. And it's like, I lived in the countryside and fox hunting was a mm. crucial part of the community. And it's mm. like, no, you're done with it. Mm. And it, 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 I'm sick of Londoners telling yeah. other people how to live. I think it's boring. Yeah, and so and we're Londoners telling people yeah. how to live. <laughs> <laughs> Except Leo, who's Scottish. Oh, and yes. she's a Peruvian Scotsman. <laughs> Woman, but, but Scots as far, person. As far as, as far as those communities go, it, it goes back to the previous story. Uh, they're some of the poorest communities in Britain. Mm. Um, they're the ones who are going to be facing the choice of eating or staying warm. Mm. They were shafted by Brexit. They're going to be shafted by net zero. And I think they want real political change. And I think we need to go and be that change. Good. Let's do it.